It was a volatile situation. In conversation with several nervous local dignitaries, it was clear that these events appeared to be tied to the recent revolution in Turkey, known to us today as the Young Turks Revolution, which occurred in 1908. You see, in 1876, the Turkish parliament had passed a progressive set of reforms, including a constitution which brought its monarchy's role in line with that of other European powers. But the king, Abdul Hamid II, was eventually convinced to scrap these changes, dissolve parliament and declare absolute rule once again, just like the good old days. Consequently, this hard-line crackdown caused simmering tension throughout the Ottoman Empire, including the failure of its Balkan Wars and ongoing neglect in Mesopotamia, with the entire empire now on the brink of rebellion. Political dissenters within Istanbul were exiled, but when they managed to convince several generals to support them, a military coup ensued, the king was deposed, and the constitutionalists, nicknamed the Young Turks, returned to power. Now, you'd think that the situation would have improved following the restoration of the constitution and that the parliament would continue with its progressive reforms. Unfortunately, nothing could be further from the truth. As so often happens in revolutions, the agenda can change so much that the new regime becomes as repressive as the old one, and frequently more so. The revolutionaries wanted a stronger centralised government and an emphasis on nationalism. Part of this strategy included a program of Turkification, which was implemented throughout the entire empire. The result was ethnic unrest, countered by state repression. To make matters worse, the very next year, in April of 1909, Disgruntled loyalists once again convinced the king to stage a coup, again dissolving parliament and taking absolute power. He was supported by factions of Islamic hardliners, all calling for the abolition of their Napoleonic style of constitution and a reversion to Sharia law. These now formed large mobs of armed extremists, who took out their frustration on ethnic and religious minorities, the most well-known being the widespread murder of Armenian Christians. It was during one of these riots that Dick Doty Wiley, now a lieutenant colonel at the British consulate in Konya, took the unprecedented step of riding urgently to the local governor and pleading with him to lend him an escort of a few of his soldiers including a bugler. They all together now galloped out into the middle of the riot and dispersed the armed mob, who had already murdered hundreds of people. Dick's reckless bravery effectively ended the entire massacre. For his trouble, he received a gunshot to the arm and several medals for valour from both the British and Turkish governments. Fortunately, the royalist rebellion was swiftly put down, and the king forced to abdicate once more, now in favour of his brother. For a time, the killings would cease. 